So uh, usually when I preach anywhere, the first sermon I will preach is a review of the fundamental beliefs because I found out my friends who are in, even students in theology college, they even say, even then the teacher asks them, what is fundamental belief number 12? And sometimes they are blank. So it is very important that we understand uh, you know, this, this way, when I introduce this one, I know that we are all friends because we believe at least the same things, right? So, uh, and uh, especially in the last days, Satan will give many deceptions. And the only way we can avoid being deceived is by knowing the truth that is in the Bible. Of course, uh, our number one uh, fundamental belief is the uh, Holy Scriptures. This book is the most stable thing in the whole world. The Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one that nor detail shall be removed from this book. So this book is more important. That's why the books, the people in the great controversy, they gave up their lives because only of the beliefs of this book. Martin Luther, Zwingli, Franz Stephen, and others, they, uh, this book is more feasible than money, than organizations, than uh, than uh, influence, than uh, position, than anything, because this book is uh, the most important. Okay. So when people tempt you to deny the things in this book, tell them you cannot raise me up from the dead if I die. But the word of God can raise people back to life if they die. That's why this is very important, and this is where we get all our beliefs from. As our brother has read in Isaiah 8.20, it says, The law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That is very important if you look at Isaiah 8, they are talking about some prophets Hayim. And I assure you, all the beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church that we teach are all according to the Bible. You know what according means? Holding is in Tagalog, ayon. Okay? So, this is the verse that I was reading, that our brother was reading for the scripture. According is not the same, completely the same, as prohibition. Non prohibition. For example, does the Bible prohibit us from baptizing infants? Have you found? I have not found. Maybe you know. You can tell me. Does the Bible prohibit us from transferring the Sabbath to Sunday? Yes. Where? In yes, in prophecy. Yeah? You can understand it. But there is no direct, uh, you know. So there are things that we believe which is not prohibited. Otherwise, the other put the the inverse is not prohibited. But the, okay, one more thing. When God, when God told Abel and Cain and Adam and Eve, when you offer sacrifice, you should offer a lamb. Did God prohibit from offering vegetables? There is no, you can, you cannot, uh, we don't know any writing out there, right? But why did God not accept? It's not prohibited, right? You know why? One more thing. Okay, there are many examples already. What is important is what is a whole deal. If God says you worship on the Sabbath day, seventh day, how many people can transfer the uh, we are not prohibited from keeping it. Well, that, you know, our ideas sometimes uh, are wrong. There is a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end is dead. So even maybe that was what was King thinking. But the most safest filter of belief is a according. According to the great controversy, says there will be a people on the face of the earth who will take the Bible and the Bible only as the basis of all reform, uh, teachings, precepts, reforms and teachings and practices. Our demand should be a clear, thus saith the Lord. 
our belief, if you want to introduce any belief, there should be a clear advertisement or encouragement to that belief in the Bible. If you want to baptize infants, there should be a very nice example in the Bible. But since it's not there, we don't do it, right? Even if you cannot find prohibition. I was just trying to emphasize that accordingness is very most safest, very important than non-prohibition. There are many things that are not prohibited, but are not according. Our, our denomination does not believe, does not try to do everything that is not prohibited. We are trying to do everything that is according. That is how safe our beliefs are, according, understand that? According and according is the safest. Okay. And we also believe in the Trinity, even if you cannot find the word in the Bible, but the concept is there. There are people who try to confuse other people about anti-Trinitarian, but uh, that debate is only English debate because there is no Trinity. There is no Trinity in Greek or in Hebrew, which is the original Bible. So the concept is there, but because God is bigger than English language, and therefore, English language cannot understand God fully, right? You cannot describe God. God is bigger than mathematics. That's why we cannot compute God. We cannot say one plus one plus one. So, God is bigger than mathematics, bigger than Tagalog, bigger than English, bigger than Greek and Hebrew. Therefore, all of these things cannot explain fully God. But what is expressed in the Bible, then that is it. So, there is God the Father who, is, who loves us so much. I want to uh, read uh, some of verses which advertise God's love in the Bible. Because, you know, if, there is, if we just understand how much God loves us, there is nothing so hard to do, right? Everything is easy. If we just understand how God loves us, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Oh, this is very nice for us sinners who were sinners, more sinners before, who were doing foolishness before, thinking of foolishness before. It says, but God shows his love for us. Is that why we were yet sinners? Christ died for us. Wow. You know, I'm thinking sometimes somebody gets hit by a car. But maybe that guy is a drunkard, so. Uh, you know, or foolish guy. Maybe he, somehow he deserves that. But if it's an innocent guy, maybe we, we say, oh, wow, what's going on? We pity. If a good guy gets hit by a car, we pity him, right? But if a, a good guy, we are the one who hit a good guy, it is uh, more terrible, right? If somebody else hits a good guy, we pity him. You know, we are finished. But if we are the one who hit a good guy, and uh, you know something bad happens to him because of our mistake. It is uh, how do you feel? How do you describe your feeling if that happens to you? You really yeah, you like to repent, yeah. But because of our sins, Christ is the one who died. So maybe if you don't understand that one, you really don't like to sin again. Because Jesus Christ did not do anything. But because of our foolishness, he is dying for us. He died for us. But he loves, God loves the word that he gave his only son, whoever believes in him should not perish for eternal life. And also this one, Romans 8, nothing can separate us from the love of God. This is a very nice song. No death, nor famine, nor persecution, nor distress, tribulation, nakedness. No, nothing can separate us, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so many verses that about God, if I were to read this, it would take us about two hours. So that's just an uh, idea of how much God loves God love us. Because uh, the basis of all, you know, last uh, several two weeks, I was uh, forced to do a revival and reformation in Rojas Mindoro. And I, I had to study all the revivals in the Bible. I found out the Word of God is the basis of all revivals. All revivals in the Bible, Nehemiah, Ezra, uh, who is this? all the prophets, it's all, they read the word, they saw God's love, and they repented. So, uh, 
But God's love in God's word is the most important because if we know God's law and we don't understand how much He loves us, it is very hard. But if we know how much God loves us, God loves us, it's actually you want to do things, right? You want to voluntarily ask God. Paul in the Bible says, we have seen our sins, we have seen God's greatness and His long suffering. What should we do? They are voluntarily to ask what the number is supposed to be. So God's love changes uh, many things, very powerful. And also the God the Son, Jesus Christ, our example. Our example, Jesus Christ, he lived a perfect life and he was an example and he is uh, being our high priest in heaven. And actually, sometimes I become an atheist when I was a student. But I realized there is really no other choice. If you become, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you are just going to die and nothing. So it's better to believe. Even if you cannot understand everything, really there is no other way to raise up from the dead. If you die, no matter how smart you are, you are going to stay dead. But if you believe in Jesus Christ, that's the only way really to be uh, revived. Life. And of course, the Holy Spirit, uh, who is also God, uh, He inspired the writers of the Bible, and He is uh, the Holy Spirit is telling us the, the, the still small voice. The Holy Spirit is explaining our our experiences to us so that we understand God's will, and it's, the Holy Spirit gives uh, our friend the ability to play guitar in church, to operate computer, to sing and to serve and to cook these things are the gifts of the holy spirit and uh, we also believe in creation some people say you know creation is uh, 1000 years each day but you know there is in the genesis one god knew this one that's why he put in the beginning uh, in the first day was evening and morning evening and morning evening you know, every day there's evening and morning that just means it is not 500 years 500 years evening and morning it is literal seven days, right? And if you look at the mountains, the Grand Canyon, the, they are all proof that there was uh, the, the biblical creation and uh, uh, anyway, if, even if you put uh, what, what is your profession? Are you uh, you are, you are teaching? Uh, what are you studying? Accounting. Accounting, yeah. Do you, do you think uh, you can put many numbers inside a box and uh, you know, shape it? After one million years, a uh, financial statement will come out. Yeah, it will not, not work, yeah? So there has to be intelligent design, yeah? Intelligent design. So we also believe in the nature of life. We were created perfect, but because of sin, we have the tendency to do evil. But God's goal through salvation is to restore in us the the image of his maker and the great controversy the center of the controversy is about God's law Satan says God's law cannot be obeyed Jesus says it can be obeyed he proved in his life also we are trying to prove in our life yeah? the controversy but the nice thing about the great controversy is when Jesus was crucified he said it is finished virtually the great controversy is concluded we just have to execute the remaining uh, part. And of course, we know who is going to win the good side, right? Because even the angels, only one third are bad, yeah? Two thirds are good. So there are more. If you want to join the majority, you have to join the good. And of all the worlds in the universe which God created, only one did not pick the fruit. The rest, they are still not going near to the forbidden fruit in their garden of Eden according to Sister Roy. So, all, tayo lang yung matigas ang ulo. We are the only ones who are stubborn. We want to eat things that we are not supposed to eat. It is vegetarian, but you know, when God says, do not, do not. So, the great controversy, and God is helping us in the great controversy about, uh, the issue is about worship, about the logicalness of God's word. And of course, Jesus Christ lived, died, and resurrected. Otherwise, uh, our hope depends on Jesus Christ's resurrection. If He can resurrect Himself, He can also resurrect us, right? And the experience of
of salvation. This is the greatest miracle that can happen in our lives. Moses, who killed somebody in Egypt, is carrying the Ten Commandments. Huh? And the Ten Commandments has, thou shalt not kill. God can change people. Who has Paul, who persecuted so many Christians, is writing almost half of the New Testament books for Christianity. So no matter how foolish we were before, how many sins we did, the Bible says, to our sins be as hardened, He can make them as white as snow. And that is the experience of salvation. God is changing people to become missionaries. And the growing Christ is the newest uh, fundamental belief. Half of this says that we should not be afraid with Aswan, or uh, what is Aswan? Yeah. Evil spirits, uh, ghosts, uh, this is specially made for Africa, by the way. Half of it is specially made for Africa because we have plenty of challenges there, right? There are people who are Adventists, but they are still praying to the uh, spirits. And we put this here, half of it is, is about that one, because Romans 8 says, we are not afraid of powers, heights, depths, because nothing can separate us from the love of God. And half of this is meaning that we are, we, since we are not yet perfect, we have to worship, to read the Bible, to sing praises, to gather worship, and participate in the mission of the world. Because it helps us grow in Christ, our spiritual life. Of course, we have the idea of the church. Everybody who believes Jesus Christ from Adam to the future are members of the church. And, uh, yeah, but also there is a fake church that enemy wants to fake everything. There is also a, you know, a, a pure woman and there is also a hard of woman. So, you know, the enemy wants to fake everything. God uh, says that if you, you offer love, you can tell the king of the best. God says you marry man and woman, then they know there is a same-sex marriage. God says uh, you worship Sabbath, then you will say you worship the other days. Yeah? Everything, God is, uh, the enemy is faking, including the church. You go to this church, and then the enemy will say, I don't say church. It's easier to commit. You don't need to eat, stop eating pork. You don't need to change like this, like this, that. So, uh, there is the prophecies about the church in the Bible, and especially the remnant. When uh, God creates a church, there are uh, people who forget the beliefs. And the remnant, for example, Noah, in his time they were sinning, and then God said, Noah, you are the remnant. And then, so Noah is now the remnant, and then the people started to sin again, and they said, Abraham, come out! You are the remnant again. And then when they are having a hard time in Egypt, come on, Moses, take the remnant. And then the Israelites started to worship idols. And they even killed Jesus. I don't know, they did not kill Jesus Christ. They crucified Jesus Christ. They persecuted Jesus Christ. And then God called another remnant, the Christians. And then the Christians started to believe their traditions. And then God revived the remnant, the Protestants. The Protestants are supposed to read the Bible and believe everything. But they just stop, they stop. They just stay in baptism, some stay in Baptist, some stay. But the remnant who continue to study is the Adventist Church, which is described in Revelation 12, 7. It says that there is a disadvantage of being remnant. The dragon is angry. So the other people, uh, denominations, the dragon is not very angry with them. But the ones who obey the commandments, the dragon is especially angry with the remnant. But prophecy says the, red, the dragon will be defeated. And they had the testimony of Jesus Christ, which if you read the, those uh, sayings in the Revelation, they will say that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so there are, I went to a uh, yes, theological, uh, uh, what is this? What is the theological follow? And then our professor there studied, is there another remnant in the Bible prophecy? They found out they cannot find any other remnant. Next, because there are many remnants, yeah? But in prophecy, there is no more remnant after this, you know, in Revelation 10. It says, you will be sweet in your mouth and bitter in the belly. That is this 
describing our experience in 1844, right? They thought this guy's coming, but they, they found out. But it says in 11, Revelation 10, 11, you should prophesy again. That means even you, if you made theological mistakes in 1844, our founders, the Millerites, you should prophesy again to all nations. That is where our mission comes from. Prophesy again to all nations, to kingdoms. And that is our mission, to become missionaries. Co-mission. Because that's just Christ's mission, we are just helping. And we are united, even some people are richer, some people are poorer, some are male, female. We are all united because Christ is the, is the vine, we are the branches. So God is the head and we are the body of the church. Christ is the head of the church. And we are all united in doing God's will. Other than that, I don't actually care if we are united. We should only be united in doing God's will. And also believe in baptisms according to the Bible, right? Baptism according to the Bible. We also do Lord's Supper because Jesus said we do this. We also have spiritual gifts and ministries. Yeah. Uh, there are people who are good in preaching, in teaching, administration, reconciliation, compassion, self-sacrificing service. This is my favorite. Yeah. That's why you see me driving people pictures around all the time. I like to help the people who preach and I listen to their sermons and copy what they preach also. Okay. And of course we believe the gift of prophecy. Because Joel 2.28 says, And the Spirit of the Lord will be poured out on the old flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So in Acts 2, 17 to 21, they, they were prophesying and the, some people said these people are drunk. And then the, the writer said, no, this is what Joel was saying. In the last days, the script of the Lord, he just quoted uh, Joel 2, but he put in the last days. Meaning, Acts 2 was already the last days. If it is already last days in Acts 2, it is more last days now, right? That's why we have to prophesy more. By the way, we are all prophets, do you know? Because Revelation 10 says, prophesy again. You know, the Midianites, the founders, they made theological mistake. But the woman in the Bible says, prophesy again. Therefore, the whole, the Adventist church has a prophetic identity. We are supposed to prophesy, to tell that Jesus is coming soon. By the way, when you say Jesus is coming soon, it's a prophecy, right? So you are a prophet. Huh? Very simple. Of course, there are big prophets. There are small prophets. Isaiah, he wrote so many things. Mrs. White, she wrote so many things. She is a big prophet. But all of us have to be prophets. You know, in the Bible, a true prophet can become a false prophet. And the false prophet, the, the, the penalty for a big false prophet is death. <clears throat> if you prophesy your own things, not from the Lord, you are supposed to be put to death. So, do not prophesy our own things. What? Make sure I tell all my friends who are preachers, do not say every, anything in front, in the pulpit especially, that is not in the Bible or not in SOP. Because we are smaller. You know, these people are big. The people in the Bible, they are, we, we have confidence in them. If it's not there, if it's not according, it says there is no lie. That's why I want to be careful. I want to put camera always so that I will be afraid not to say anything that is not in the Bible. And the SOP. So, we also believe in the law of God. We memorize that from our, from our, when still we were young, it says, do not commit, uh, do not kill. But Jesus says, if you say bad words to your friend, you are guilty, you are in danger of judgment. Because saying bad things is like killing somebody. One time I joined the atheist group in uh, Facebook. I told them, you know, there is no atheist calendar. Because if you look at the calendar, it says 2015. From what? Of course, from what? One, what is one? When Jesus was around. Therefore, what kind of it? You had to find another calendar. I told the atheist. They were very angry. <laughs> because, you know, the calendar says that Jesus Christ was around. So, you had to find another calendar if you don't believe Jesus Christ. And then, I told them again. I, I want to invite you to a, to a Holy Land tour. You're not going to Jericho, to Jerusalem, 
Because they said, we want concrete evidence. There is plenty of concrete <laughs> You can dig, you know, if you don't believe Bible, just dig archaeology. You will find the parts, you will find the, the scrolls, the, you know. So, there is hard evidence. Yes, it's hard evidence, yeah, solid. Something that is, uh, they say, something that is tangible. Uh -huh. That one you can, you are already stepping on, <laughs> well, yeah. on the, on the, what is this? Uh, the, the road where Jesus was walking to the cross. Really hard. Yes, really hard evidence. So, and then they, they told all sorts of, all the bad words in the English dictionary, they, they commented on my post. I was really, then I realized that it is true that Jesus said, when you see bad words, it's like I died many times. <laughs> you know, I'm not very sensitive. But when these people who hate God, they said these words, then I realized that it is true that Jesus says, when you say bad things, it's like you are, so I block them. You know, in Facebook, you can block them. <laughs> they cannot see you, you cannot see them. So it's nice. <laughs> I block my son, 50 people. Huh? Yeah, very crazy. So, that's thou shalt not kill, right? Also, they say, thou shalt not steal. Ah, that's why. Ah, that's why we do not use pirated software. Oh, aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. We have to, uh, before, if you don't, uh, I think I'm the only one in the whole world, in the whole Philippines, preaching this uh, anti-piracy. Because I am a computer science teacher. I have to teach. Yeah, so that's why we do not even copy the DVDs yeah? <laughs> and uh, copy the MP3s illegally. Yeah? And you know, for us to make it easier to understand, even the books, we don't sell out and then we don't sell. Yeah? I saw so many books inside. You know why? Because we don't want to hurt the one who wrote that book. We understand they are our friends, right? The author has a signature. I was driving him around. So even these people say, can I have Xerox copy? I said, I am, ah, I am, uh, I am, uh, this is, I don't want to Xerox because the author, I know the author. I don't want the, you know, there is a copyright law, even Ellen Joy says, there is in concepts to editors and writers, there is a uh, author's stewardship. If you write something, it is your property. God's stewardship to you, not the conference stewardship, not the company's stewardship, according to concepts of editors. So, that's why we respect copyright of books, of software, of mp3, of movie, because thou shalt not steal, right? And then it also says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, but Jesus says, if you look on a woman lustfully, you are committing adultery. Oh, but can you commit adultery alone? You have to have at least three. Or two, at least two, right? You cannot commit adultery alone. So he just said, you are committing adultery with her. So if you are a woman and you wear clothes that they attract all the last looks of the men all around the world, then you have many adultery. <laughs> That's what Jesus said, right? With her, not them only. They are committing adultery with me. No, you also. That's why we have to be careful, by the way. <laughs> I, I hope you will not uh, invite me again. So I will just finish all the bad things, all the terrible things to, to, to say. Ellen G. White says, you know, there are many people who are good, but they don't know which is right or wrong. I have many friends who say, oh, this lady is very short skirts. I found out they don't know that it's wrong. Nobody told them because everybody is trying to hurt the feelings of people. So me, I don't care. I will run away after my sermon. But I will tell the truth because it is in the prophets. Okay. According to 3SM 277.5, there are the people ask Elijah which is how long should be the skirt? And Joy says, I don't know in inches. But there, I saw in vision three groups of women. The other group, the first group, it's very long, that one. They are uh, cleaning the street with their skirt. <laughs> the, the leaves are collected. And she says, that is not healthy. Because the street, the, the dirt is coming to your clothes. And then the short one, uh, the second one, the description of this, if you open your EGY and you read in 3SM277, 
I am very sorry, but there is Uka Gokai. <laughs> Maybe tonight you are going to Uka Gokai to SN, right? Because you did not know. What wings are the state? Because we did not know, right? Yeah. But now you know, then there is Uka Yuka and SN. So, this is what's wrong. By the way, I was trying to make this picture myself. I could not succeed for many years to make this picture. Because to tell people to read is very hard. To show them picture is easier. But when I try to look for a short skirt, my the eyes always go not to the skirt, but to somewhere else. So if I cannot display that in church, because we cannot learn good things by showing either. So I found in the internet a description of a short skirt without showing the legs. They have pants under the skirt. So this picture is not about the pants. It's about the skirt. I just happened that there is pants so that they may not be tempted. The boys, you know, boys have very sharp eyes. Huh? Very sharp. So, and the second group, their skirt did not reach the knee. Ooh. And she says, there is no more uh, debate. It is too short. Okay, so the, there is, sir? Way below the knee. Yes, yes. No, no, what, what? I, was, I was just saying what she was saying. So the third group was okay. They were okay. They were nice. You know? How long was the skirt? It was not touching the floor. And when you walk up the stairs, you don't step on your dress. But it is about to the top of the gaiter wood. G-A-I-T-R. So I was wondering, what is gaiter wood? You know, in Google, you can type gaiter wood. When I found gaiter wood, it is under here, here. So I was saying it's conflict because the other one is uh, then the greater book. So I maybe the Holy Spirit told me you type greater book 1800s. Ah, because she used the 1800s language. When I found greater book 1800s, the average length was about here. Ah, okay. Even the enemy wants to change the greater book definition, yeah. So. The right is the up to the you know but it, so that is what's the what is that that the prophet was saying? I was telling you, if you don't understand how much God loves God loves you, this is very hard. But if you just understand God's love, maybe you have to read to the other one verse. You type this is very easy. You know God did everything, so what's so hard, right? So I was just telling you and uh, because I know God's people, I preach this everywhere. I am afraid to preach because people will hate me. Maybe. But I found out God's people love the truth more than their own opinions. Amen. Really, around the Adventist church, I preach terrible sermons. But it is a miracle I have more friends because of these terrible sermons. God is working in the hearts of. Uh, People, the law of God, wow, especially the Sabbath. Oh, that's why I have gone around preaching about the Sabbath, and I have found out that there are people who don't even cook on Sabbath. Before I tell you why you have to cook on Sabbath, I will first tell you about people who don't cook. Because if I tell you straight, it's very hard. You will be stressed. <laughs> right? But if I tell you examples, it's very it's just copying. In Okra University, the cafeteria cooks all their bayan. This is not a perfect example, but it's going to that direction, right? It helps. They cook all their bayan in the cafeteria. Big, this is a mass production. Before Sabbath. So I told the president, how do they do it? And anyway, I met the president later, I will tell you. They said, oh, we have a Sabbath menu. I said, sir, how do you do it? How did you force? Said, no, we did not force. It's the management. Really? Not the theology, the management. So the money, the money has more power than the Bible. <laughs> no, just joking. But this good example, this better example. It's not perfect example, but it's going to that direction. How do you do? He said, we have a Sabbath menu. There are food that can be cooked and it will not spoil many days. So do you not cook the things with just many to make it? It will spoil very quickly, right? But you have to choose which buyer can be cooked and it will last long. Oh, and then, uh, so I heard that in the International Student Conferences 2014 at IAS. 
Uh, and then in uh, another theological forum in 2014 also, the SSD uh, Associate Minister Secretary, he, the topic was Sabbath. He agreed with the Adventist.org that says the preparation of food should be done before the Sabbath, including the shining shoes, the putting of fuel, the you know, ironing of clothes, these things are in the guidelines, Adventist guidelines. And then when I was preaching these things, one of my former teachers who is now retired, he, she told me, you know, your other teacher who was soon as retired, Mam Abla, when she retired, she went to another island and she tried to avoid cooking on Sabbath as a Katoy cafeteria uh, manager. They just put the food under the inside, they put hole in the ground and put the food there. In the morning, it's still warm. So, oh. so even without electricity, without refrigeration, they can do it. Huh? That's what my teacher said. And then I preach in Puding Ahoy, and then what this guy, I always debate with him in Facebook, but in this topic we are together. <laughs> he said, my grandfather used to do it, and I was wondering, in the Philippines, I thought nobody was doing it, because maybe the missionaries did not teach all things. You know, the commission says, teach all things. But maybe they did not teach because it's hard. But I found out that all people, the uncles and the grandfather, they know it. So they knew it, but we forgot it. No wonder the fourth one says, remember. <laughs> huh? God knows you will forget, the Filipinos especially. I found out not only Filipinos, it's also an issue in Thailand, in Indonesia, and other countries. But we should remember, I mean, all this truth, before I used to only, it, it, it used to be my friend only was preaching this and I was debating him. Now, I attended two conferences at IS, I heard it. And then my teacher also said, I, you know what, I think God is putting, is restoring the truth to his church. Because it's not only me, it's not only my friend. From our leaders now, from my teacher. So, and then I, my mother who is uh, listening to the videos that I preach. <laughs> she starts to cook also before Sabbath. And she succeeds most of the time. Because, you know, obedience requires intelligence. You need to, the, the secret of observance is preparation. If you cannot prepare properly, you will make mistake in observing the Sabbath. And then I told the cafeteria and one at this institution, they said, you know, we can do it, we have refrigerator. So I was trying, I mean, how big is the refrigerator we will break so that you will be saved? You know, <laughs> we are not being saved by Sabbath. We are not being saved by 10 to 1 means. But we are going to help because we do not keep. Yeah? And then Joel says, Sabbath is salvational. I don't know what that means, but that is what she says. Right? We, we get lost because we don't obey. We are not saved because we obey, but we get lost because we don't obey. We are saved because God is grace. Okay. And then some people said, you know, in, uh, in, that, in life missionary, we just eat bread, fruits, granolas. Oh, these things don't, you can not eat one big thing. That's for that. So they can do Friday or Thursday. And then we just said, you know, in our province, they put the caldero in Dayami. Uh, what is this? Haystack. Haystack. Hay, you know, hay. Yeah. You rice the, the grass yeah. you, you put around. I think that is for insulation. And then somebody in the internet says, we just uh, use slow cooker or, because uh, we use chaba. I think these are juice. How they do it. So it's nice also to learn from it. And then somebody saw so my post. That's my son, it's my friend. He said, it's very easy. We just prepare all the food on, on uh, Friday. And it's a blessing because they have the church ready. You know, they don't have to quarrel about the kitchen and so on. And then uh, Jer Jerry Turud in, the face in Facebook says, it's easier. Just not eat. <laughs> just do fasting. You don't need to worry about cooking. By the way, the 11.5 is my experience. I tried this. Not because I was avoiding cooking. Anyway, I was not the one who was cooking. I try this because I have a friend who I am helping, and I said, why are you not eating? So, because I, don't, I, I, I want to fast once a day. If they are doing it, I want to copy. So I try to copy, and I like to copy things. If things are not nice, maybe it's nice, because I found in the Bible, Moses was fasting for two days, and he wrote and uh, Jesus fasting for two days, and he did his first miracle and got his disciples. Elijah was fasting for two days, and then he went to them. So the fasting, this things uh, seem to work. So I tried. One semester, bull. All Sabbath, no fasting. You know, it's, it's heading. 
it gave me the headache, but I try, I'm not dying, I'm just trying, it's experimental, eh? this is not a decision, this is an experiment, maybe you call it an experiment, it's not an issue, you just try. One semester, and you know, the Lord put me in more service. I found out in my experience experiment, if you do the fasting, God will put you more, become more a missionary. I'm not a theology graduate, but after doing this, I spoke in two uh, crusades. I was the speaker. I don't know how to make sermon. I just read other people's sermon. And then I prayed to God, Lord. I heard Pastor Gurfan saying when he was a student, he planted four churches with his father. I said, how oh, will I will plant church also with my friends? After doing this, I was able to help plant two churches in Binyan and in uh, yeah. Just helping, you know, driving people. This is my service, my ministry. <coughs> And then everywhere I go, they see my baron. I don't know, they say, are you from here? You are the speaker. Huh? Really? So I, all the Sabbath, almost, I was speaking here, sometimes conflict, conflict, conflict. I don't know what's going on. When you do it, God puts you in, it's not, nothing changed. I didn't become special or what. But, you know, God is just working. God is the boss of our world. So it's, uh, but then I box sleep because I cannot, you know, I got tired of preaching. I started start fasting. And also the preaching stopped also in the evangelism started in the church planting stopped also. <laughs> so that is uh, I was just verifying that is the fasting that uh, so it is I conclude from doing it and from not doing it that it is when you don't ask, don't ask me to explain, I don't know why. You just try yourself. Ryan James said that it just it fruits, yeah, fruits, you know, there is the man has feelings. If you don't remove the feeling, the price will not come, right? So it can stay many days. And Mike Rivera says, you know, she is Paradis or Caldero. And uh, they have special Caldero. You know the, you know what's, you know Caldero? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What is Caldero? Uh, uh, rice cooker. Uh, iron bath. Iron bath. The pot, yeah? Pot. You know, if it's spoiled already, it's, there's something spoiled in the pot. Next time you put something there, it will spoil quickly, right? But then, they have a Sabbath caldero. That caldero, there is not, it has never been spoiled on, nothing has been spoiled on that pot yet. So, it is still uh, clean, you know, you can put food in the same many days. So, they have special caldero for Sabbath and caldero for every day. So, uh, that's one of the ways. It's, uh, somebody also said, if there is a ref, you know, it's easier to keep it, because there is ref now. In the wilderness, do you think they have refrigerator? Uh, and then, even in some churches, they even avoid washing dishes because uh, I enjoy just avoid washing dishes. But in one ministry, I said this ministry is very biblical. One of the most biblical ministry. I went there to observe. I will see if they are washing dishes. I found out in the kitchen it says wash your own dish. I said I said that's better than washing many dishes. At least you want to wash one dish, dish only, not dishes. Eh? So, but some churches are using this uh, wax paper, huh? Yeah, that's right. Really, sir? Yeah. yeah maybe. Paper. Or paper plates. Anyway, there is, you know, in Balibaku there is new stuff. The Chinese store, the plates are very cheap. Mm -hmm. It's better to buy plates than to disobey. The most important commandment, yeah? The seal of God is the Sabbath. That's why the enemy wants to remove, to scratch the seal. It will not be clear. But the Lord has put instructions on his seal. And somebody said, you know, our elder did not cook for almost 28 years and 20% of the church knows. Uh, that's that. In the Philippines, I didn't know some people. You know why? If you do it, people will say you are a few. Mm -hmm. Because you are obeying. But the Bible and the spiritual prophecy is not for us. It's for us. They are just copying. And so, Somebody can do it, but they are doing it secretly because some people get angry when people are obeying. The enemy is rough with the people who keep the commandments of God and they will labor them. But I'm going to tell the truth because it is written, right? Yeah. And then one worker said, okay, I will just prepare kamote, you know, kamote, sweet potato, and salads, red vinegar, and put in the rack. I said, mom, then you cannot eat cold because energy white says you cannot eat cold. You will, uh, Warm. He said, no, don't worry. I live in the car. At noon, it will be warm. <laughs> he said, maybe. 
And then in the Central Visaya Youth Conference, the caterer decided to prepare all the food before packed lunch. But there were only 100 food packs by the B. I don't know if you know this one. Many people have told me this story, but I don't really know what's the details. But many from many directions, the story is coming to me. This family, they only prepared about 100, but there were like 300 people. Uh -huh. But they fed many, and there were still remaining. Miraculously, God multiplied. Mm -hmm. I, that's what they were saying. I don't know if it's true, but the speakers came, I drove them to the airport, they told me. The, the organizers came, they told, they told me. And some people, the video people came, they told me. And also this uh, Michael Caloro, you know him? No? He said, this businessman says he does not even bath. No, how about bathing? How about You know, Ellen Joyce says, the bath should be taken out of the How about that one? This is what the people say. Since Ellen Joyce says, bathing is not supposed to. Therefore, you don't follow it. Therefore, you should not say, you follow the king. But I, I know I grew up in that school. Elementary, greater nor until college. I always heard this explanation. But I cannot read it in any official document. I look for it in Adventist.org, in Adventist Biblical Research, in the Bible, in SOP, in all the GC or the vision papers. I could not find this writing. It is just something we hear and we say. But it is not. If you can find it, I will be happy to read it. So that I don't need to make hard, life hard. Right? But it is not an official explanation. You try to look for it. If you find it, very good. We will not be having hard time. But it's not in the Bible. It's not in the SOP. What I want to be faithful with is what is in the Bible and what is in the spirit of prophecy. And that's what we... So, what is my excuse for taking a lot? Ellen White says... Hey, yes, sir. Ellen White says, you should do everything possible to make the sick comfortable. Right? Sick. Taking care of the sick in the hospital. So I just think I am sick here. Yes. Okay. There is sickness because you know the world is dirty, mm -hmm. the water is dirty, our microbiology is not balanced, the bad germs and the food, you know, they are not uh, balanced, that's why we are sick. But Moses in the wilderness, he only requested God said, You take about Friday. So he did not think about every day. Why does God have to tell them you take a bath because they, I'm coming? That means the wilderness is clean. All the biology, microbiology of deserts is nice. That's why we only need to take a bath when the Ten Commandments is coming, right? So, we take care of our sick, yeah? sick. Okay, and then so, so this is the, this is Pastor Mambu, the president of Kung Club. He said they don't use left in Kung Club. They only prepare the Sabbath to And Sri Lanka, they said, we know how to do it also. So even in Sri Lanka, this group is known. And then Ayas, okay, this is Ayas, the preacher last time. He said, in Angola, if you're an Adventist and you want to go on Sabbath, you have to hide. Because everybody knows you're not supposed to do it. So Angola is a near to heaven, yeah? By the way, this is what Ayas told me. My auntie says, our grandfather always called these children, do not cook, do not cook. And the uh, people from Egypt and says, how do you do it? He said, we just cook beans on Friday and breakfast and it, the beans will not spoil. And then, my friend also says, in the Mindoro, he said, he told them, we don't have to become offshoot to believe this. So they try to do it and you can do it. If the offshoot can do it, why cannot you do it? The SOP belongs to us, not to them. They just read everything, they will come up. Right? In Africa, the average years for being going out of the church is two years. They finally come back, sir, according to the Africa to Paris. And somebody said, one lady evangelist from JD Thai in CRC, how she avoids cooking, she just avoids eating also. <laughs> so there are many, many examples of how to do it. Now, let's see why are they doing it? Because the Bible says, tomorrow is the rest, bake that which you bake, and see that you will see. And what is remaining, we kept in the morning. And when they, some people did not do it, they did not understand what Moses said. It was from God. God scolded Moses. How long will you refuse to give my commandments and instructions? My question is, 
Did the Ten Commandments change? Did Sabbath keeping change? Does cooking, not cooking on Sabbath, come from the Pharisees, from Moses, or from the from that one from uh, you know people say you know the Pharisees in the Hebrew. The, the Pharisees said, do not walk so many steps during the Sabbath. Is that from the Pharisees, from God or from Moses? Yes. Pharisees, because it's not here, right? But if it's here, and it says the Lord said, it is from God, right? So we know which is from the Pharisees or not. The Pharisees say, you cannot pick. No, that's not. He said, Moses did not say that. You are the one who said that. The Pharisees even said, do not... Uh, do not uh, use the elevator, it's not an elevator, they don't operate on Sabbath. But that's not from the Bible, it is from the Lord. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Oh. So we have to differentiate which is from the Pharisees, which is from God. Okay. So, by the way, there is also in I think Exodus 12, 16. This is the nearest verse which might have permitted Sabbath cooking. It says in this verse 16, in the first day shall be a holy convocation. On the seventh day shall be a holy convocation. In that day, no one should do any work except that which is for food. Oh, my parasol. But if you look at the context, why is there a convocation on the first day and the seventh day? And if you go to verse 18, you will find out it is not actually the seventh day of the week. It is the seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread starts on the 14th day of the first month, if I must be stated. It starts somewhere in the year. But the start date is depending on where the year starts. And the Jewish calendar has four possible days where the year starts. So that means that that Feast of Unleavened Bread it is not necessarily the seventh day Sabbath. Because there are four days which January 1 in the Jewish calendar can start. So that means the seventh day and the first day there is not necessarily the seventh Sabbath. So that is not the Sabbath, seventh day Sabbath. That's just a seventh day of the past feast of the year. Otherwise, it will conflict with the manna and with the energy wife, right? So the Bible is, doesn't contradict itself. So, since, you know, when we read the Bible, for us to be sure if it is really God's will, we also affirm in the spirit of prophecy. And she says that those who neglect to prepare the Sabbath day and who cook food on the Sabbath violate the fourth commandment and are transgressors of God's law. Wow. Very clean. Now, if somebody tells you no, then well, this is another prophecy. You ask him, well, are you greater than Adam Jemel and Moses? That's why I tell you, my friends, don't say anything that's not in the Bible of SOP. Somebody will prove you wrong later. It has to be according to the word. So what what does uh, what about our church documents? Adventist.org and you click Sabbath observance document, it says the buying and preparation of food, you know, preparation. Uh, how about microwave? Is it cooking? It's eating. There is, you know, in microwave there is cook and there is work. In rice cooker there is cook and there is work. So, so I don't know why it's not cook, but you can work. <laughs> so there is in rice cooker, do not press that. <laughs> By the way, she was saying that in cold weather, you should warm the food. So is it cold? Ah, so I was checking because in Exodus 35, 1 to 3 says, God told Moses not to kindle a fire. In the, but more energy wise says, it was not enforced in the promised land because of the, of the extreme weather. So I checked the weather in the Canaan and weather in Egypt and the weather in the Philippines. The climate. I compared the climate in the Philippines, the climate in uh, Egypt and in Sinai Peninsula and the climate in Canaan. That's where the Philippines is the same. It's the same in Egypt and in Sinai. Huh? Because the energy is especially wonderful in cold climate because of the cold climate. So, 
Anyway, if the weather is very cold, then you have to enjoy it. You have to warm. Yeah. So there are many. I just summarized because uh, we have to remember, remember, yeah? remember the Sabbath day. Because this is the in energized vision of the Ten Commandments. The Sabbath was the one which is glowing, very special, and this is also God's uh, covenant, God's seal. Stewardship, that's why we put all our influence, our money, our abilities in God's work, because we want to convert these things to our treasure in heaven. Do not put your treasure in earth, remove and last, you consume, but forward your treasure in heaven by doing God's work. And also Christian behavior, ah, this is very nice. I want to emphasize this because this is also need to be remind, reminded. It says here that our amusement and entertainment should meet the highest standards of Christian taste and beauty. Direct question, is boxing included in the highest standards of Christian taste and beauty? Highest, yeah? They, they, they made it very positive. Instead of saying, don't, 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 don't. Just high standards. Yeah? So the people who don't want to obey, they understand. But the people who want to obey, they understand. Highest standards. In Philippines, boxing is very challenging. Not to watch. Yeah? The old Filipinos, except some, watch. Where is it in the Bible? Of course, we have to find. Philippians 4 8. Whatsoever is true. Okay, so all the four, the uh, four pocket books, the first fiction, the national bookstore, not included anymore, right? Whatsoever things are honest, all those movies who oh, grabbing one wife from another husband and so on, the telenovela, ah, it's not honest. Whatsoever is just, oh, cheating cars, you know, uh, grand theft, all those, you know, this game where you are stealing cars. It's not uh, just pure. Nako, those uh, noontime uh, show with the uh, very short, uh, what is this? It's very like short shorts. Very short shorts. It's not pure, right? It's not included in our entertainment, according to the Bible and God. Fundamentally, whatsoever is lovely. Oh, how about those angry? No. So that's not lovely. Huh? It's angry. They are destroying the buildings. What are they destroying? The birds. And what are they? You should look for a lovely birds, okay? Because the Bible says these are the things which we keep in our mind. Do you know that everything that comes to our senses is saved in our mind? Really? It's very advantageous to students, yeah? But you will be wondering in the examination. I thought everything I saw is in my mind. But when you try to answer exam, you don't remember. But after the exam, you remember. You see? That means it is still there. You cannot retrieve it on the exam, but it's still there, yeah? Everything you saw and you heard is actually there. The problem is how to retrieve. So, whatsoever is good report. So, watching bad news is not very good. That's why, you know, the 12 spies, the two good spies saw not good news. If you want to report, report something good. It should be good report, right? The Joshua and Caleb kind of report. So, those are the biblical filters of what we are supposed to uh, allow to go inside our ears and our uh, eyes. The Bible says, oh, the Bible is going to keep. You know, in, in, in our school, you cannot box anyone. It's prohibited. You will be... Uh, really? That's, is that serious? You need some experience? No, I thought that was serving things. I almost said, so, said you, you are going to be Rebuke, something like that. Discipline. Discipline. But if you watch only, it's no. okay. How come? If you watch cup fighting, you're not fighting with the cups, you just watch. <laughs> it's not good, yeah? But if you watch people fighting, then you also pay for, you know, pay for satellite, yeah? So it's like watching people fighting with cups. Yeah? And the Bible says, you know, we are created in the image of God. If you box somebody, you are destroying the image of God. And Romans 1, verse 32 says, the people who are unmerciful will not enter the kingdom of heaven, verse 30. But the last verse says, not only them that do, not only the boxers, not only the 
but also them who have pleasure in them that be. Oh, so if somebody hits and you say, Yoo-hoo! Be careful. He, is, he cannot have pleasure in them that do evil. Yeah? Do not support the people who do. Because the Romans 1, the last verse says, not only them that do, but those who have pleasure in them that do are also included in the judgment. Okay, of course, we do not eat. Uh, in Leviticus 11, it says things like that. Bible takes uh, and you have pleasure in them. Romans 1, sir, the last verse. Romans 1. So, of course, we do not drink and we do not eat unclean things. But you know, the Leviticus 11 says some things can be clean, but they become unclean. You know how? For example, a banana. I inject it with poison. Is it still clean? How about chicken? Chicken is normally clean. Huh? But if I put so many poison, it's clean. Huh? Leviticus 11 says chicken is clean. Why do people so many Adventists die heart attack? Because the chicken is not clean anymore now. Huh? Bible says remove the blood and remove the oil. Can you remove the blood and the oil totally? I'm happy I'm in a vegetarian restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why things that is to be, it says there, even a part. If some unclean things fall on it, you have to break it. The meeting was never. The verses that we don't usually read. So things which are clean can become unclean, like the fish. You know? The fish, energy white says the fish in the sea swim. It's true, right? So maybe here the water is clean, but then swam goes to Japan. And you know there is Japan, that's a nuclear waste. That's why the Forbes magazine says in California, the California tuna has traces of nuclear waste. And California is very far from Japan. 150 plus years ago, energy white says the fish in the sea, they can swim around and get all sorts of mercury and so on. So before you eat fish, you ask the fish, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> have you been to Japan? Oh, by the way, GMA7, Inquirer.net says, Laguna Lake is not safe for humans. So you don't go swimming, let's go swimming in Laguna Lake. No, don't go there. The government, the, the GMA7 says, it's not safe for humans and fish. So if you cannot swim there, how about the fish? Do you let the fish in and then you eat the fish? So, Things that used to be clean can become unclean because the environment can make it unclean. Okay, so oh, the, the most helpful, the, you, we, we, we know that there is the idea, there's food, there is the acceptable, the fish and chicken, which is clean, and make sure it's clean. You know why so many people, I bring them to the hospital, my friends, they eat fish. I said, Jesus was eating fish. Fish. And I found out Jesus was not, was not putting salt and oil in their, their fish. I think that's what uh, that's the reason why I'm bringing so many of my friends to the Of course, marriage and the family believe wives love uh, submit your husband, husband, they love your wife. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. If they are not in the Lord, they just respect the uh, honor, honor, for. But if they are telling you wrong things, you honor, but you can obey only in the Lord. And Jesus Christ is our high priest in heaven, and we believe in the second coming, which is imminent, but in the new fundamental belief, this imminent was changed to near, which is what the Bible says, near. Because imminent is very hard to translate in some languages. And of course, we believe in the death and resurrection, the way you succeed is death, but God can resurrect us. Death, praise the Lord. And millennium and the end of sin, if you type 6,000 years in the GUI, you will find out Satan's demonstration is only 6,000 years. Therefore, we are at the end of time. And we believe in the new heaven and the new earth. So, uh, these are just the... So, our Adventist message is very nice. And it's very nice that our lesson in the Sabbath school is about mission. Uh, wherever God puts us, there is a mission to do. Whether we are in the home only, washing clothes, there is a mission. And the Lord is restoring the truth to His church, through the leaders, through many people, and we are very excited because we are nearly the end. And you know, friends, last thing, if you just see 
what the book is doing, you will be inspired. That the end is really every day I see news in the newspaper. And if the book is very simple, industrious, we should be more industrious in uh, doing the work. So to close, uh, I want to ask that we start the prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the truth in the Bible, and the spirit of prophecy that our church is teaching, Lord. We praise, Lord, for a great organization which has been prophesied in the Bible. We praise, Lord, for our leaders, for our pastors, and especially for the leading of the Holy Spirit, Lord, in the Redland Church in these last days. We ask, Lord, that you prepare our hearts for more of the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that we might be missionaries into all the world as you are commanding us. Thank you for forgiving us from all our sins and for giving us this gift of salvation. Give us wisdom and understanding and efficiency to share it with others, Lord. Please bless my friends, my brothers and sisters here, Lord, whether they are studying or doing their profession, make them light to their community. Thank you for hearing our prayers and just in your prayer. Amen. Sabbath day, just in the prayer. Amen.